Hey, how's it going? I'm Shiloh Kunishiro, and welcome back to me wearing the only Star Wars shirt I own. I know, I'm ashamed to all nerds all over the world. This is part two to D20 Academy's complete comprehensive guide to Fantasy Flight Games Star Wars role-playing game. Yeah, uh, in this part we're going to be talking about character creation in part one, which you can find right now on our YouTube channel. We talked about an overview of the system and the dice mechanics. Hey guys, if you want to see this exciting, exciting system in action, look out for our brand new Star Wars actual play series called Friends Like These, which is dropping January 1st, 2021. It's going to be here on YouTube, also on our podcast, D20 Academy, on Spotify, Apple, wherever you listen to podcasts. The trailer for the series is out now on this very YouTube channel. So go over and watch that. Link is in the description. Hey, if you're someone who, you know, is interested in playing this system and you want to know more, we're going to be continually dropping the next part of this series where I go through the entire Star Wars system. So go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know when a new episode comes out. All right, so let's dive into character creation with basically the step zero of all character creations in all role-playing games, which is character concept. You need to come up with a concept for your character. Just, you know, a, a bare bones idea for uh, the kind of character you want to play. Um, you just need a theme or a feel sometimes. Um, maybe you want to kind of uh, make a character similar to another character um, that's in a book you read recently or a video game you played recently or something like that. Um, you don't need to decide on the species now or the career or the gender or anything like that. Really, all you need is just the bare bones basic, like what's the concept? What are you trying to build? What's the direction you're thinking of going? And then in the rest of the steps, we will flesh out the details of that. So you want to start with the character concept. Okay, so in the core rule books, the step one, they say, is to determine your background. Now, unlike Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, this is nothing mechanical um, just simply you coming up with a basic idea of where your character came from. Um, you know, where did you come from? Why are you here now? And what is your relationship with the various factions in the galaxy, right? The Empire, the Rebellion, the different criminal syndicates, things like that. And each of the three books gives different prompts um, to kind of help you think of where you came from and, and your character's background. So in Age of Rebellion, um, they give prompts on why you maybe joined the Rebellion. In Force and Destiny, they give prompts on, you know, what maybe your relationship to the Force is, things like that. Step two of character creation is to determine your obligation, your duty, or your morality. It's one of those three things depending on which of the games you're playing. Once again, Edge of the Empire, Age of Rebellion, and Force and Destiny, they're all basically the same system. Um, even though they have different core rule books and all that kind of stuff, they're really just the same system. The only difference comes down really, I, I would say, to these, uh, these things here. Okay, so what exactly is each of these things? Well, first of all, obligation and duty, they kind of work around the same system and you can't really have both of them working at the same time. So you can't really have a smuggler in the party wanting to use obligation and then like a pilot from the rebellion wanting to use duty because they don't really work together. You kind of have to choose one or the other. And then any force sensitive character can use morality. Obligation is a character's, uh, when you build a character, you have to determine someone that they're obligated to or something that they're obligated to. Maybe they owe money to a hot crime lord or they uh, are, 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 you know, want revenge on somebody or something. It's, it's an obligation that they have that weighs on them as a burden that they're going to have to deal with over the course of the narrative. And this is actually explained deeper on page 38 of the Edge of the Empire Core rulebook. Um, but essentially, everyone in the party determines an obligation, and this obligation is a set number, um, typically an average of like 10 to 15 at character creation. And this fluctuates. It grows the more obligation you take on, and it lessens the more obligation you relieve in the story. And this has a little bit of a mechanical benefit at the beginning of each session, essentially. You roll a d100, and if it lands within that range of numbers, um, then characters uh, have their... Um, strain threshold reduced, which you probably don't know what that means yet. That's okay. We're going to get into that later on in today's uh, episode. But essentially, it means that uh, it's harder for them to, to sustain strain. Um, it basically just means that they're, they're more stressed out and anxious because their obligation is weighing on them. It's, it's, it's like a mechanical reflection of the narrative concept that they have an obligation. Duty is very similar. Uh, you get duty the more work you do for the rebellion, and you lose duty the more uh, work you know you don't do or when you disobey them. And um, rolling within those numbers gives you a boost to how many hits you can take, essentially your hit point maximum for that session, um, because you're bolstered 
by your, uh, your duty to the rebellion. And then morality is a different thing and it just gauges your uh, how close you are to the dark side, how close you are to the light side. It's a number from 1 to 100. The lower you are, the closer you are to the dark side. The higher you are, the closer you are to the light side. And that all has its own mechanical things explained on page 48 of the Force and Destiny rulebook. Duty is explained more on page 46 of the Age of Rebellion core rulebook. Okay, step three is to select a species, which is kind of like choosing your race in Dungeons and Dragons. Um, you know, are you a human or a droid or a Togrutin or a Wookiee? You know, your species. And your species gives you a couple different things. One, it gives you your starting attributes. So as we talked about in part one, you have a couple key defining characteristics um, that are called attributes. So um, there's brawn, agility, um, cunning, intellect, presence, and willpower. And every single character has uh, different scores for all of those. Um, and, you know, obviously the higher score you have in brawn, the stronger and beefer you, you are, and the higher score you have in intellect, the smarter you are. Um, just like in D&D, you know, with the ability scores, like strength, dexterity, constitution, that kind of stuff. So a species gives you your starting attributes, but don't worry, you will be able to adjust them a little bit later on in character creation. It also gives you uh, your starting wound threshold and strain threshold. We're also going to talk about these a little bit later on in the episode, but basically in this game, um, your wound threshold is essentially your hit point maximum. So whenever you take damage, you take, it's called taking wounds, and you count up in this game, you count up how many wounds you have, and once that exceeds your wound threshold, you fall unconscious and begin to die. Um, just like how in Dungeons and Dragons, um, you have a certain amount of hit points, and once you lose all those hit points, you fall unconscious and begin to die. The only difference is you're counting up. Now, strain is kind of a secondary resource that everybody has access to. Um, you can take strain the more uh, strenuous an activity is, um, and you can also like like take on strain to do more, push yourself beyond your your physical or mental limits, um, activating certain you know features or powers from your career um, can give you strain, or you know sprinting uh, even even harder and faster can give you strain, um, or even just trying to complete uh, any kind of uh, ability check, maybe you, you'll collect some strain through there. And it, it's just kind of like an abstract representation of of how much. Um, energy and effort uh, you, you, your body can sustain. And once your strain exceeds your strain threshold, you fall unconscious and begin to die, just like when your wounds exceed your wound threshold. Your starting species also gives you the amount of starting experience points you have, which we'll expend later on in this episode, and also a couple special abilities if you have any. So for example, if you're a Nautilin, the ability to breathe underwater, or if you're a Chiss, the ability to have infrared vision. Okay, so steps four and five is to choose a career and a specialization. Um, now, these things are a little confusing, and I'll get to the difference between them real quick. But kind of think uh, of a career kind of like a, a, a general uh, a concept for your uh, a character's role in the party. And a specialization is your character's specific um, um, expertise, if that makes sense. Kind of like a career is kind of like a class. And a specialization is like a subclass, kind of along those lines. Um, well, what you want to do during this step is, you know, as a gaming group, decide what kind of role every person wants to fit in the party um, so that everyone can have their own strengths and weaknesses and everyone can cover each other's bases um, so that, you know, no, no two characters are too alike, that they constantly come in conflict. Um, and that none of them feel really special in the game. That, you know, maybe you have some sort of technician or mechanic or engineer. Maybe you have someone who's a diplomat or a leader. You maybe have a pilot, um, some kind of soldier or tank. Um, you want everyone to be able to fit a different role in the party, be comfortable uh, and, and happy with the role that they, they choose in the party. Um, and then the career you choose it, it is gonna be kind of that general concept. So, um, uh, for example, a career might be like doctor, Right, but within being a doctor, right, um, there's all different kinds of specializations in, in the sense that, you know, you are you a surgeon, are you a nurse, or all that kind of stuff, right, within being a doctor. I mean, that's a huge field, right, of expertise. So that's kind of what your career is. So maybe your career is, uh, you know, like a pilot, or a diplomat, or an explorer. And then once you choose your career, um, it, it's going to give you a couple uh, starting career skills, which we'll get into in a second. Um, and it's also going to give you a list of specializations you can choose from. So what is a career skill? Well, if you look at your character sheet, there is, you know, a bunch of skills. Um, 
and each of those skills has a little empty box next to it. And if that box is ever checked, it means that that skill is a career skill for you. We'll get into more of what that means later on in character creation. Um, but essentially, your career will give you a list of skills, and those skills, you go ahead and check that box next to all those skills and mark them as career skills. The other thing a career gives you is a list of specializations that you can choose one from at character creation. Specializations are once again a more precise, specific area of expertise. So your career might be bounty hunter, but within that you can be an assassin, a gadgeteer, or a survivalist, right? Three different specific niches within the career of being a bounty hunter. So what does a specialization give you? Well, a specialization also gives you a couple more career skills. So find those skills in your character sheet and go ahead and check them up. If those skills are already checked, then don't worry about it. And they also give you a talent tree, which is a really cool looking uh, tree um, that essentially you're going to be purchasing different talents from these, which are essentially like feats or features um, or powers. You're going to be uh, purchasing talents from these trees as you get more XP uh, along the campaign. Um, these are really fun to look through and, and, and to slowly climb through. Um, so that's also what your specialization gives you. Okay, in step six, you want to invest experience points. This is the, the part where you really specialize your character and make them how you want them to be. So essentially, you have your starting uh, experience points, right, that you got from your species. Um, and this is the amount of experience points you can spend to upgrade your character and kind of customize them as you will during character creation. Keep in mind, you can also um, uh, decrease your uh, duty or morality to gain more experience points in character creation or increase your obligation to gain more experience points um, during character creation. And that is covered within those respective sections on obligation, duty, or morality in the core rule books. The first thing you can spend experience points on is to improve your characteristics, right? So that's brawn, agility, cunning, intellect, all that kind of stuff. So you can improve those. The way you do that is you spend XP equal to 10 times the number that characteristic will be upgraded to. So if I want to change my brawn of two to a brawn of three, it's gonna cost 30 XP. Keep in mind that you can't jump numbers. So if I wanted to increase it from two to four, I first have to increase it from two to three for 30 XP, and then from three to four for another 40 XP. Keep in mind, you can only improve characteristics with XP this way during character creation, not later on the campaign when you get more experience points. You cannot spend those to upgrade your characteristics even more. So you may want to invest most of your experience points during character creation into improving these characteristics because you won't have a chance again. The next thing you can do is train in skills. So you have that list of skills and currently all of them have ranks of zero, unless some of them have some ranks from some special abilities from your um, species. So what do you do exactly? How, how do you get more ranks in a skill? Well, we talked about uh, ranks and skills and what that means in the last part um, and how that affects uh, your, your, your dice roll. So go ahead and check that out if you haven't already um, or if you want to refresh on what that means. But basically, the more ranks you have in a skill, the better you are at it, um, obviously. So how do you get a rank in a skill? Well, it's just like improving a characteristic, except the cost is five times the number you will increase it to. So if I'm increasing my, let's say, my, my piloting um, from 0 to 1, that's only 5 XP. If I'm increasing it from 1 to 2, that's 10 XP. It's 5 XP times the number you will be increasing it to. And just like characteristics, you can't skip. So if I want to increase it from 1 to 3, I have to first do it from 1 to 2, and then 2 to 3, and spend all those experience points. Another thing to note is that if it is not a career skill, if it does not have the box next to it checked, it costs an additional 5 XP. You can also, of course, spend XP to acquire talents. So if you look at the talent trees from specializations you have, um, each talent on there has a cost. Um, but if for some reason you don't remember what the cost is, even though it's written right there, the first line uh, at the top of the talent tree, those all cost 5, then 10, then 15, then 20, then 25 XP. Um, and so you can just spend XP to buy those talents. And now you have those talents, um, which, you know, give you little boosts and features and powers that you can use during the game. Keep in mind that you can always buy any talent in the first row, any of the five cost talents. But if you want to buy any other talent, you have to already have a talent bot that is connected to that talent by a line. The last thing you can spend experience points on is to acquire a new specialization. 
So you know uh, how when you chose your career, you also got to cho choose a specialization within that career. Well, guess what? For throughout the rest of the game, you can acquire new specializations, new talent trees, all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's really cool and really fun, but it is kind of expensive. To get a new specialization, it costs 10 times the amount of specializations you will have. So uh, during character creation, right, you, you, you start with a career and you choose one specialization to start out with, right? So say I was a bounty hunter and I chose assassin. But uh, now I'm at this step of character creation and I also want to uh, uh, take the survivalist specialization. Well, that will cost 20 XP because it'll be 10 times two because I'll have two specializations. Okay, remember that um, if you want to get a specialization that is not in your career, it costs an additional 10 XP. So if I am a bounty hunter, that's my career, and the starting specialization I chose was assassin, and then I wanted to get the scholar specialization. The scholar specialization is actually from the colonist career, not the bounty hunter career. So that's gonna cost me an additional 10 XP to acquire that specialization. Gaining ranks in skills, acquiring new specializations, and acquiring new talents, you can still do all of those throughout the campaign. Uh, the more XP you gain during, during your adventures, you can spend those on these things. The only thing you can no longer spend XP on after character creation is improving your characteristics. Okay, so step seven is to determine your derived attributes. So the stuff near the top of your character sheet, um, your wound threshold, your strain threshold, your defense, and your soak. Well, your wound and strain threshold uh, should be determined by a number, determined by your species, and then your brawn and willpower. So if you're a human, your starting wound threshold is 10 plus your brawn, and your starting strain threshold is 10 plus your willpower. Your defense is uh, a number that makes it harder to hit you. Um, so essentially, um, whenever uh, we're going to get more into combat and things like that in another part of this series, um, but essentially anytime anyone wants to attack you, um, depending if it's a melee attack or a ranged attack, you have two different things, a melee defense or a ranged defense. Depending on what that is, whatever your number is in that defense number, um, that's how many black dice they add to their roll. So if you have a melee defense of one and someone's attacking you with a melee attack, that means they add one black to their roll. Your defense starts at zero for both melee and ranged, unless for some reason you have it from like a species or, or um, from a, a talent or something like that. But usually this starts at zero. Um, only when you buy armor and things like that will you start getting defense typically. Your soak is a number that um, essentially reduces any damage you take. And typically it's just your brawn and then any armor you get um, in a later step in character creation can also improve your soak. So whenever you take damage, you first reduce the damage by your soak and then any remaining damage you take as wounds. Step eight is to determine your character's motivation. So now at this point, you have more of the details. You have their species and their career. You understand more of who they are, what role they fit in the party. And you can kind of flesh out more of their backstory and their background now. Um, you want to determine their motivation, which, by the way, is only narrative, has no effect uh, mechanically. But you just want to decide what your character's motivation is. Um, this is just a good thing to do with any character you play in any role-playing game. Um, but a character's motivation is why they do what they do. Now you can come up with your own motiv motivation or you can roll on a randomized table that they provide in the books. Okay, so step nine is to get your gear and appearance. So figure out what your character you know, looks like, what they're wearing, and then also get their gear, right? Their weapons, their armor, their equipment, all that different kinds of stuff. We'll get more into gear and all how all that kind of works in part three, the next part of this video series. But until then, just know that everyone has 500 starting credits to spend on their gear um, but you can get more by either decreasing your duty or morality or increasing your obligation as detailed in those sections of those core rule books you should also know that at the beginning of the first session of the campaign every player rolls 1d100 and they also get that amount of credits to use as pocket change during the campaign step 10 is to acquire the party resource so this is something uh, a valuable resource that the party starts with in Edge of the Empire, this is a starship that the party can start with, within limits, of course. Uh, you can't just have an Imperial Star Destroyer straight off the bat. Um, in Age of Rebellion, this is either some kind of cargo ship, a squadron of Y-Wings, or a base of operations somewhere. And in Force of Destiny, this is either a starship, a Jedi holocron, or some sort of mentor. All right, that does it for this part of this uh, teaching video series. 
Um, the next part, part three, will be focused on gear, equipment, how all that kind of stuff works. Um, don't forget, Friends Like These, our actual play series, is coming out January 1st, 2021. Um, and yeah, if you want to keep up with today, what we do here at D20 Academy, um, go ahead and check out our Instagram at D20 underscore Academy. Comment there or comment down below here to get into our Discord, which is a cool little community of storytellers and tabletop role players. Um, or listen to our podcast, D20 Academy on Spotify, Apple, YouTube, wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you are a game master looking to build your very own campaign, maybe it's even in this cool Star Wars system, go ahead and hop over to d20academy.com where I have a free video for you there that takes you through the entire process. Until next time, may the force be with you.